Good day, grade 10s. In this lesson, we're going to be formalizing everything that we've learned about the state of matter. And we're going to be doing so by looking at the kinetic molecular theory. Now, this all sounds very complicated, but what it really is, is a theory that helps us to explain why matter exists in different phases. So what does it state? It states that all matter is composed of particles, which has a certain amount of energy. This energy allows the particles to move at different speeds depending on the temperature. There are spaces between the particles and attractive forces between the particles when they come close together. So what you need to understand about what we've just said is that the kinetic theory is really just a summary of what we've already learned about solids, liquids and gases. So remember that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles and that is a very big thing that we're going to be using in the kinetic molecular theory. So now we're going to use this theory to describe the three states of matter. So let's look at solids. One, the particles have got little kinetic energy. In other words, they do not move around at all. They vibrate at a fixed point. They've got strong forces of attraction. They have strong forces of repulsion, which means we cannot squeeze or push together a solid. They have a fixed shape. So do you see that we already knew all this, but now suddenly we are you saying all this under the kinetic molecular theory. Now let's look at liquids. Liquids have got weaker forces of attraction between them, therefore they move more freely past each other, they take the shape of the container, and the particles have got different velocities, and they've got different speeds, but the same average kinetic energy throughout the liquid. In other words, what are we saying? We're saying that, remember kinetic energy is a measure of the temperature but it's also a measure of the speed of the particles so even though the particles all have got different velocities they have the same average kinetic energy there are strong repulsive force, forces which means we can't really compress the liquids and the particles collide with each other and the walls of the container so therefore we can have some pressure and in fact we use pressure of liquids in lots of different pieces of equipment in everyday life Finally, the kinetic molecular theory as it stands to gases. They've got weak forces of, between the particles, so therefore they've got a much more average kinetic energy. They've got more motion, they move faster, and they move further. The random motion with elastic collisions. Elastic collisions means that they don't lose a lot of energy. In fact, theoretically, true elastic collisions don't lose any energy, but we do know that all collisions lose a bit of energy. And because of these, it's quite easy to compress a gas. And finally, the particles move at different speeds, but again, the average kinetic energy of the gas is the same throughout. Right, I hope you now understand how the kinetic molecular theory explains the different how the different particles move in the different phases. Thank you, Great Tens.